Hey Poochie boy. It's all working? Yes. What's this? A sour tape stuck to you, buddy. Oh, I'll put that in the bin. Right. Well, 30th of September today, folks. And it smells like an autumn morning. Big time. So, let's get started with this brew. Okay, I've just weighed out some hops for the plum porter, which is what we're gonna be brewing today. Now, I did contemplate whether it would be wise or not to go ahead and fire up the pilot kit because, well, A, we've not really used it before, and B, I am doing a brew on the big kit as well. We've got the proof of concept just about to start the boil as you can see and on top on top of that we're also using one of the newly commissioned fermenters for the first time so there are a few firsts going on today but what i'm going to do in this video is concentrate solely on the plum porter recipe and we'll just cut out all of the other goings on if you like so what i've done with the fermenters is get them prepped while we were waiting for the strike water to heat up and I've just tidied up the ends of the pipework here and we've just put an elbow on and connected that into the cooling loop and then I'm going to stick the temperature probe on the side of the bucket with a bit of the foil that we used to uh, insulate this because I think it will provide good barrier to the ambient temperature and we'll just pick up what's coming through the bucket so that's good all good there I've got caustic recirculating through the Brutec kettle and duplex filter system you can't really see it because it's crystal clear it's also going through the plate chiller once we commence the mash then I'll run some rinse water through there and that will be ready to receive the sparge. The HLT is just about full to the brimbo and uh, that has come up to temperature now and is recirculating at 76. I think we'll just stop it there and let the PID take over. So we are ready to mash in here all I have to do is put the grains in, which are weighed out in this tub. So here is our grain bill. Unfortunately, you can't see much of the dark malts there at the bottom. Gemma weighed this out for me the other day. But trust me, everything's in there ready to go. So I just have to keep an eye on the big kit and dig out the mash tun. And then we can come back to this and start to mash in. Plum Porter. Okay, the battery went there, folks. So sorry about that, but all we've done is just mixed in. I had to add about a litre of cold water, and we're at 69.4, 69.5, depending on where the probe is. That's probably just gonna drop that last degree. There we go, look. So I'm happy with that. So we can say that the mash is at 69. I've set the timer already. I'm just going to put the lid on and then what we're going to do is go ahead and uh, just change this PID. There we go. So now we're looking a little bit closer on the temp. That's matching pretty much what we've got in the mash tun. So we can continue to mash and the timer is of course now counting down. We're 2 minutes and 51 seconds in. So we're going to leave that for a while and then we'll come back in about 40 minutes time and we'll set up some recirculation for a vol off. So I'm also going to use this opportunity to test out our spar jar. As you can see it has picked up a little bit of grain but hopefully that should push through naturally. Looks pretty good. And we're also going to use this opportunity to take a little bit of a pH sample. So I've just grabbed a bit of the wort 
here, so I've just grabbed a bit of the work here, and uh, we're just going to let it cool down in this glass, and then we're going to transfer it once cooled into this glass and see exactly where we landed on the pH front. And that's looking pretty promising to be fair. 5.4, 5.3, I don't know if you can make that out through the glass, but that's close enough for me. 5.36, 5.4. So maybe next time we could add a couple of milli milliliters of uh, maybe lactic acid, but I don't think we need to. I think that's close enough, folks. Anyway, I'll leave you with a parting shot of the spar jam until we come back in about 35 minutes now. Oh, and I'm not going to leave this running, by the way. That was just to see exactly how it worked. And it worked a treat. Right, we've got the alarm going off here for the mash, but at the same time I have to uh, start the transfer for the big kit, so I'm just gonna let this mash for another five or 10 minutes, shouldn't be a problem. And then we'll come back and start the transfer on this kit. <laughs> it's a bugger doing two jobs at once. I always do it to myself. All right, most of the panic over there. <laughs> that was fun. Also something to note, this probe shit the bed at the same time, so with the mash tun reading, uh, I had to bypass it and just use the trusty old thermometer. For those who want to know, it's a food check thermometer. These are about 100 quid, and they come with calibration certificates and everything else. So, we have been um, running our liquor into the, uh, what would you call it? Of course, need to do a ball. Huh? So yeah, as I was saying, we've been running our liquor into the Herms coil, so let's do a ball off now. I nearly forgot that. So, I could have had this running actually for 10 minutes. Right then folks, we're going to do the vol off now, it's a little bit late, but uh, better late than never. We'll just rotate this vol off attachment that I made. Uh, I'm still not happy with this by the way. I think we're going to be revisiting this again at some point. It looks the part, but it just doesn't work because what's happening is down on this manometer on the side it is slightly pulling a bit of a vacuum across the two pipes which is telling me I'm recirculating too fast. We're just going to go until this runs clear and then we'll be transferring that into the boil kettle. I think we're on track. I think we're on track. So that's looking like a nice colour actually. Probably a little bit on the pale side for a porter, but I'm sure we can live with that. So what we need to do now is just get the boil kettle ready to receive. We'll be checking out the trug dam for the first time today as well. So I'm just gonna isolate the supply to the pump. There we go. I'm going to isolate the base of the Herms coil. We're going to disconnect the recirc and we're going to connect it to an inlet on the boil kettle just there, that one. 
and then we're going to control the flow of this and we're going to open the pump back up again and we will now see the work going into the tank wonderful so that's part one second we have to control the flow so it's not running in there too fast and then thirdly we have to now take our research pipe from the Herms, from the HLT should I say, turn the HLT pump on and then we'll be rinsing through the HLT pump. We'll do a better video than this in the future folks but I wanted to show you the plumb porter. Bloody cameras all over the place. Anyway, fully open the Herms coil, HLT recirc even. And then yes, that should now start to run clear. We'll maintain the volume in the kettle at 35 litres. And then we know that we're matching what we're taking out with what we're putting in. So you should see that run clear any minute now. The pipe's just gone clear, there we go. So we are now sparging. Beautiful. Right, we're going rogue for a minute, folks. So you can see that we're holding the level there. In fact, I might just want to slow that down a touch. And the same on the inlet. We are pulling the beer across pretty fast. And if I come round to the back, which is a nice, easy access, and you can see that's how fast we're going in via the Whirlpool port. We're getting close to being over the elements. And here's another angle of the mash tun. I'll tell you what you can't do though. Oh, you can't smell it. And it smells very nice. It smells very good. Oh, there's not a lot of roasted character there, but there is all of the uh, notes that you want in a porter. I think this is gonna work. I really, really do. Right, and then one more thing I'm going to do while I've got you in my hand is just give you a quick peek inside the fermenter. This is about to be emptied. It's definitely a two-hand job. And in there you can see We've got some sanitizer and the cooling coil. So I'm just gonna give this another shake around, make sure all the surfaces are coated properly before we turn it on, on the wall. It'll be a V2 that we're looking for. And I think I'm not plugged in at the other end. Right. Failed there then, didn't I? Right, I've killed the sparge because we're about there with uh, the volume. We're looking for 53 litres and we're just, just above 50 there on the, uh, on the doodly doos, on the marks. So um, I've just taken a gravity reading as well with this and our target was 10.41.8. We're at about 10.41. Like I say, we're just a little bit away from the volume gravity. Volume gravity? Volume required. So I think uh, we're good to go. So we're looking for 48 litres post boil and a 1048 uh, SG. I think we'll be close to those numbers. So uh, it now leaves me to empty the mash tun. Okay, we've hit a boil. I've had to adjust the thermoprobe on there. They don't seem to be very accurate, these probes. I might change them out for some PT100s and get rid of the K-types altogether. Anyway, we are boiling in there. As you can see, we've passed the hot break already and uh, I've just toned down the power a little bit so we can go forwards with the first hop addition. So, in they go. That is Goldings, and that will be in there for 60 minutes, uh, and we're gonna be boiling lid off. We've just had the first clear out as well of the, uh, the filter. There was actually nothing in it, 
you can see in this persid here they're the bits that came out that's what was in it at the bottom and uh, yeah it seems to just be bouncing a little bit on the pump now we've done that there's a wee bit of an airlock you can see that the pump is trying to move it I can see the air bubbles floating up the pipe actually so this might be something that we need to play around with because we could do without having an airlock every time we go to uh, change out that filter that won't be ideal will it so something we're gonna have to look at in the future so we've run into a bit of a problem and as everyone may suspect it involves this duplex filter so without prior filtration in the boil kettle these clog up far far too easily so what I've had to do is run one of the filters without the filter mesh in and the other one is held in reserve for when we do want to run it through the plate chiller so we either need to pre-filter in the kettle the trub dam is not good enough or we need a different filter so I was watching Norfolk Hillbilly's video the other day and he's got one of these pot filters from eBay well guess what that's right folks this little beauty was sent to me by none other than Andy at GC Supplies and of course it contains a really good filter look at the size of that one and this is similar to Clive's it's a screw out one I don't know if he had a small mesh size though like what I've got here this is about uh, one millimeter or 0.5 millimeter um, could be 0.75 the one I use on the big kit is a 0.75 I believe but I think that we may just swap out for this little beauty instead and even though it's not a duplex this should actually be big enough to cope with anything that this 20 gallon brew kettle can throw at it so I would imagine yeah, it goes that way, that's in, that's out. So I'd imagine we could just stick that maybe on the inlet of the pump or something down here. I don't know. A couple of ISO valves either side. Mount it like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, we'll have a play around. Uh, but for now, we're just going to have to use what we've got right time to add one protoflux tablet as you can see we've boiled off quite a considerable amount we're actually a little bit below what we're looking for but that's fine we'll give that protoflux 10 minutes and then we're going to come in and transfer the whole lot into this fermenter that we've got here ready and waiting well I dropped a massive bollock this time so I forgot to hook up any cooling lines I don't have the right fittings so I've had to quickly put together a bodge and which means I'm wasting all this hot water on the floor which is a bit of a bastard but nevertheless it's coming out cooler than it's going in we're recirculating and it's doing its job as it should so uh, whew, that was a close one I nearly completely cocked up anyway we'll see if we can balance the temperature and try and get it so it's coming out of here at 20 degrees and then we'll start the transfer straight away into the fermenter but I had to rush around like an idiot then for 10 minutes but that's what this test is for, to iron out all the creases. Right, transfers in progress. We're coming out at 22 and dropping, as you can see by the decimal point there. Unfortunately, we had to swap hoses and back flush. We bunged up the plate chiller. These filter 
uh, inserts are too fine, too small to cope with the Brutec ball kettle not having a pre-filter in place. We're really going to have to sort that out. We need something in the kettle. That trub dam just ain't going to cut it, I'm afraid. So we managed to swap backflow a little bit, lost a, maybe a litre of work or so, and then ran it again forwards. And uh, this is the result. She's trickling out in there at a fairly decent pace, and the temperature is good. That's the main thing. So I'm just going to let this kettle empty. And uh, unfortunately, yes, we are losing all this water to the floor. I might be able to divert some of it into the HLT for cleaning up but I may as well just capture it in buckets to be honest, quite frankly. Uh, right, there we go, we've still got 30 litres to transfer. It's been a learning experience folks, it really has. And it ain't over yet. So we've got our tilt on. We're milking it for every last drop folks. And uh, the transfer slowed down a fair bit now because I suspect it's that trub dam bunged up. I had a funny feeling that was going to be a bit of a letdown for us, but never mind, we live and learn. So all we need to do is just wait for this last little bit of work to transfer across. It's taking its time. We've got a pretty good bucket full, if you can see the line there. I think we'll make 40 litres. I seriously do. And I'm going to take a 500 litre 500, 500 mil sample so I can calibrate the tilt black which we've got sat in some water and we're going to be dropping him in to the plump water along with a sprinkle of Nottingham Ale yeast. I think that's what we called for on the recipe. Was it Nottingham Ale yeast? It was indeed Nottingham Ale. So we've kind of overshot starting gravity, to be expected. We didn't know what the efficiency was going to be and we boiled off a little bit more than perhaps we should have done. So 10.55.5 means it's going to be more of a plum porter reserve than a plum porter. So I've got that jotted down here. What I'm going to do now is uh, put that hydrometer sample back into this tub and we'll drop in the tilt black bad boy here and we'll take uh, a calibration reading for it right we've got it in the fermenter folks so a few little things to finish off I've got a little bit of reflective foam insulation here so I'm just going to pull this off like that to make like a little patch and then what I'm going to do is just drop in the sensor probe for the one that we're going to be using maybe just about here and if I stick that that side put the probe in and stick that that side then that should give us a nice little patch I'm sure you can see that there's a nice little patch where we can slide, hopefully, the probe in and out relatively easily. I could have made that a little bit looser, quite frankly, but I think that'll do for now. Pop him in. There we go. And then I've got one of these uh, adhesive temperature stickers whether they're any good or not I don't know I've never used them before but I've just found a pack of 10 from my old Idle Valley brewery days so there's no harm in sticking that on the bucket like so the lights not great in here so the camera's hunting for a bit of focus right then so that's that and then we've got the tilt so I've actually calibrated the tilt in here and uh, the reading that it's coming out at is 1056, 1055. 
it's actually a 10.55 5, so it's bouncing between the two. And uh, I've calibrated it, but that is also the uncalibrated setting. So I'm quite happy to go ahead and put that in the tank. So this is what we've got in the fermenter. Looks really quite nice. So I'm gonna sprinkle it on a fair bit of Nottingham L yeast. Maybe 20 plus grams worth, maybe 20, maybe 30. Well, come on. All right, then, maybe 60. Ah, go on then. You know what? It's a big beer. So I'm gonna just tighten that back up. This will go back in the fridge. I don't backpack these because I use them pretty quick, so I just put a little clamp thing on. And then I've got some sanitized tongs here. And we're just gonna pick up the tilt and we're going to drop him smack bang in the middle and there we go so that now is the beer put to bed and then we need to of course open the taps on the top of the cooling coils and we are away so there we are folks we have the tilt, login, both, well it's logging four tanks in here at the minute, we've got all four tilts up and running, come on sunshine, tablet's a little bit slow. Anyway, my job now is to continue with the clean up operation, find somewhere decent for that tablet to sit, and I've got to get all of this trub out here and all of the grain out of here and also all of the grain out of the big kit because I actually left that as well and it's already gone half past five so I'm gonna absolutely blast it right first excursion on the double tip well second really but uh, I'm gonna count the Brorix for so here I have a bucket to catch the true. There it goes. Give it a rinse. Get in there now and uh, just scrub the uh, boil marks. You know where the the lines are, and then that will be uh, that will be cleared out. I'm hoping the mash tun's just as easy. Right, we're going to try the tip into a bag. I don't know if this is going to work or not, but that's where we're aiming. Come on, buddy. Hey. <laughs> Spread the clamps a little wider. <laughs> right, let's try that. Nearly a win. Oh my God. Second time round we got it, folks. Second time round we got it. But I must admit, there is probably just as much on the floor as there is in the back. Check it out. I think we need a little bit more practice on that one, don't you? Now that's one hell of a view, isn't it? <laughs> It works an absolute treat. A few things I've got to iron out. The PIDs are way out. So they're all sat reading 30 something now and it's only 17 degrees in here. So they're not accurate low end, they're accurate top end. 
maybe because I've got extended K-type thermocouples on there, I think what I'll do is look into putting some PT100s in. But quite frankly, I can run it all manually if I need to in the meantime. Uh, one of the PID probes came off on the HLT. Obviously didn't do a good enough job soldering it. That's an easy fix. And then of course there is the duplex filter system which shit the bed big time with the lack of any filter in the boil kettle. So this is pump protection, the duplex system. We should have a filter in the boil kettle anyway, but of course these SS Brutec kettles don't come with anything other than the Trub Dam and quite frankly I don't think they're worth the stainless steel that they're bent out of. So we'll be looking into making some type of filtration uh, bazooka tube or something like that for inside the boil kettle. We'll see, I think I've got a few bits knocking about that I could probably lay my hands on. And fail that, we'll sub it out for that big uh, Y strainer that I got from GC Supplies. Cheers Andy. Anyway, uh, one thing left for me to do. This is the porter, it looks quite plummy doesn't it? Uh, we'd better have a taste, haven't we? Oh, oh wow, that is really bready actually. Oh, that's, that's probably one of the nicest worts that I've actually drank before. I think this is going to turn out all right. It's low on the bitterness. Got tons of malt backbone in there. That's what I wanted, you see. That's why I didn't put any black malt in because I wanted to avoid that roastiness. This doesn't have any. It's going to be an interesting brew. Anyway, we'll track its fermentation now that we've got the tilt hydrometers in there. And, uh, well, let's see how it turns out in a couple of weeks' time when we rack it onto some plums. I'm kind of having second thoughts about that. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.